Hey guys, we're live. Buggy. We're live, Adam. Just lost. We it. got it. Oh, okay. Which, okay. Thank you. We're here. We got Adam Kubert. He's in uh, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> we can listen to Tracy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this week we got Adam Kubert in New Jersey. We got Eric Canetti. He's out in Portland. Klaus, of course, is in New York City. I'm in New Jersey. We're waiting on Dave to come in, which he'll be in in a second. He's always late. But uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, this week to this fine, lovely right. winter winter day. Is it winter? Is it snowing in your side of the world? This, really yeah, this morning it, uh, yeah, like it was thirty eight degrees. This <laughs> yeah, it was, it was snowing a bit here in Jersey. Huh? It was. It's crazy. Okay. All right. There goes my tech support. Now I'm on my own. I'm really gonna. <laughs> now you're you're, 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 doomed. you're in the woods by yourself. I am doomed. God, thank God Klaus is there. Otherwise, I'd really be worried. Yeah, don't worry. We got Klaus. He's a um, good tech support. I'm not sure why. Yeah. <laughs> I figure you know, I won't say, but I'm so pissed. Okay. Well, let's see what, what are you working on there, Adam? Uh, looks like a Captain America sketch cover. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, I'm trying to make a nice drawing of what I'm trying to do. And let's see, Eric is working on a cover recreation of Barry Windsor Smith, uh, Weapon X cover. Wow. Yeah. Eric's going to make me look bad. I could just no, tell. No, no, it's... Uh, look at that. It's, it's trying to find the... Uh, hey, Eric, I don't think we've now. ever met before. Well, I think we have, just very briefly. Very, very briefly. Yeah, here. I don't think typically, I've ever met Eric. typically at a show... You are jam packed, full of fans, and I'm I'm always uh, hesitant to go and bother you. But we've met like all of two minutes collectively multiple times. But hello, is Eric speaking? Because I I can't hear. If he is. Yeah, he is saying oh, how much he dislikes you. Come on. Oh, I couldn't hear. Is was he really talking? Because I I couldn't hear anything. Uh yeah yeah yeah, it should be um. Oh uh, I'm. You can only hear me. I hear. I can hear you good. Can hear Klaus. Klaus, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I can hear Klaus, but I, I can't hear Eric. Huh. Yeah, fascinating. That's, that's all you need to hear, Adam. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? You're, you're breaking up too, Klaus. All you need to. Ugh. All you need to hear is uh is Klaus. Yeah, I can hear you. Klaus. I can't hear Eric. Here we go. We're going to try this again. Hello, and Klaus is one, breaking two. up. Yeah, I can hear Eric fine. I can hear Klaus fine. I can hear Adam fine. It might be on your end, Adam. Yeah, where's that tech support? What is that? <laughs> I know. We'll try, get my tech I'm going to try another microphone to see if it works. <sighs> I'll be right back. Hello? Yep, we can hear you. Going we, through my trace. And we got... Um, I can't hear Eric. We got uh, Klaus a new phone and a new microphone as well. Hello. Yeah, That's you're it. there. We okay. got you. Coming in loud and clear. What's Klaus working on? Okay, I'm just going to get... I don't know. Give me something to uh, throw. I got nothing. Skeletor. Got nothing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're dead <laughs> hey, JJ. <laughs> uh, I got nothing. So we're just hanging out on a fine Friday afternoon morning. Is it Friday? I think it's Saturday. Saturday. Oh, I quit. I got to go. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Right. I like what you're doing, though, Eric. Like Thank you, you, sir. Uh, Dave just came in. Hey, Dave. Hey. Hey, Hello, Dave. Hey. Hey. Wait, wait, something, something's not right. Where's the uh, reverb on uh, on uh, Klaus's uh, camp? I, th I think he, gift camp. he gifted it to Adam. Oh, that's right. <laughs> You're not using your new microphone, though, Klaus. No, I'm not. But by the way, Eric, thanks for all the tech uh, suggestions. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, really appreciate it. We want, we all yeah. want to be you. No, that's that's inaccurate. Hey, Mark. I want to be him. I, I, like, I like me. See? There you go. Okay. Yeah. Everybody except Dave. <laughs> I, I built the entire DNA of my life to be more like Dave Johnson. You know that's not true. How dare you? It's somewhere in the vicinity of accurate. It's like 95% accurate. 
don't pander. Don't, it's you're better than that. Come on. <laughs> Trying <laughs> something out for 2020. Yay. All right. Where is everyone? I'm gonna do Uncle Scrooge for McScrooge at McDuck. You are? Hey, I got a commission. Oh. <laughs> Scrooge McDuck, yeah. It's gonna be awesome. I'm actually gonna paint it because why not? I'm having you have the painting with it. If you have the time, absolutely. I gotta find a way to hide Wolverine's junk. His junk. Wolverine's junk. Let me see. Well, well yeah, in the in the original Barry Windsor Smith cover for Weapon X, I think it's number one, right? Uh, he just has this. He just has this massive core shadow that goes down the center of him, and I thought, like, boy, that's well, not being is, that's not being facilitated by anything. That's just like I gotta well, hide stuff, you know? It's hair, you know. It's, he's he's got a huge, uh, <laughs> that's I guess. I guess it takes a genius to know what another genius does, but okay, I'm not that smart. So I'm gonna find a way to hide his junk. That's my my goal for the next hour and a half. Nice. By the way, I found that old photo of you uh, cosplaying one of the one of the girls from. Uh, oh, don't do it! Oh my God, that's nightmarish. <laughs> My wife still has that on her phone. Yeah, man, that's the best photo ever. It really is, but I really feel bad for that young lady. She <laughs> is, she is ten, you know, trending way too close to like my Cro Magnon features, and it's not attractive. Oh man, I, I, I felt remember. so bad. Did you take that, Dave? Was that you who took it? Yeah, no, no like, that was me. We were there. I took that pic. I took that pic. So what? You just... Yeah, I thought it was me. Uh, no, no, no. She walked by. I was like, there's Eric. Well, I, I, I must have made you take that photo. Because I was like, <laughs> you cannot let that go. That's amazing. That uh, is awful. Now, personally, I don't feel bad, but I just like, I know what I look like, and I feel bad for that young woman, because she's got to look like me. Yikes. For those who do you, don't... Do you know of this photo, uh, Klaus? Have you seen it? No, I have not. Uh, you oh, have... Yeah, it's perfect. Are you putting it online right now or what? Uh, yes. In matter of fact, it's coming. <laughs> don't, don't. Send no. it to him directly. Don't put it on the screen. <laughs> Come on. Let's see. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, 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 end, of okay. the, end of the day, you can do what you want. But I really yeah. think it's like, I feel bad for that young woman. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. But when when you see it, Klaus, it is unmistakable. It's as if I went there and cross dressed into that cosplay. It, it literally is. It's me most, through and through. Most spot on looking rubber <laughs> ganger I've ever seen. I mean, I mean, I was I was compelled to call my mom and said, "What did you do, mother? <laughs> how many how many of us did you have?" I. Uh, you know, I still get people uh, posting that that naked guy at the TSA um, thing. Everybody thinks it's me. So, oh yeah, there's one you of know. you. No, it's not me, but everybody <laughs> says it's me because it, it, <laughs> But it's hilarious. This guy took his literal. Hey Dave, is that a new camera you have got over your shoulder? The what? The the ca camera that's pointing down on your desktop. No, is that a new one camera? I've been using the whole time. I right, continue, Dave. You were saying there's a guy that took something. No, took he, photo and... he, he decided he had enough of the whole TSA, you know, pat down and all that. So he literally got the kid and somebody took a photo of it. And they, uh, they you know, I'm kind of, you know, I still get that today. You know, it's like, hey, it's you. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, well, I think it's funny because it's not me. So what the hell? I don't care. Well, mine's the other way because that is me. I mean, uh, I mean, it's not me. I mean, I wish I had the kind of balls to do that. But yeah, how many years ago was that? Uh, that that guy did it. No, the the one of uh, of uh, what do you call it? Fem 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 Eric. Oh, I don't know. Um, Four yeah. years, five years. That was a MegaCon. Uh, no, it was like what 2010, 2011? Wow. 
for some odd reason, as I was trying to prove to somebody that that photo exists on a lark, I think I reached out to Dave first. I said, "Hey, Dave, do you still have that?" And I don't know, I think oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I reached out to you. I think maybe too early in the morning, what have you? Maybe you didn't get to it. So I, I so I was like, ah, I wonder who has. I was trying to show it to my coworkers, right? And they're like, "No, we don't believe you." Yada yada. And so for, just on a on a lark and a whim, I I text my wife and I said, "Hey, Bev, do you still have that thing?" <laughs> And lo and behold, she had it on her phone. And I go, thank you. Wait a second. Why the fuck do you still have this on your phone? There it is. It's up on screen now. You got to admit. Woo! It's good. It's I good love stuff. it. I'm still not convinced that it's not you. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought unless Eric was sitting right next to me while I took this picture. I was not at I that was. show. I was yeah, you were. I was not. Were you were no, no, no! You guys texted me that while I was—I uh, couldn't make that show for whatever reason. You know that—that that reminds me of like you know those those stories you hear about Mark Hamill walking through the convention in disguise and stuff sure. like that. Sure. That's 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 what I see when I when I see that. <laughs> we yeah. all build our own narratives, Klaus. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I hear Mark Hamill used to cosplay as uh, Mark Chiarello. And, uh, and that that's work. pretty. That's pretty close. It's close. That's. I'm glad. I'm glad there's finally a photo of that. That, that finally happened. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna hope that the. We haven't made that public, right? We haven't so, sort of like put that young woman on the spot because again, I, I feel guilty and bad. Nah, it's mm -hmm. your sister. Your sister. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if uh, we can get Adam back in here. He's been having some technical issues. Let's see. Here we go. Adam. We can reassure Adam that it's that's you know technical issues is par for the course. It always happens to the first to people who are streaming for the first time. That's true. Is this his first time? I thought he's been on before. Uh no, no. This is the first time on. Are you? Is he on a? Uh... Google Chrome or is he on uh, Safari? Because that that always screwed me up. Safari screwed you up or Chrome? Uh, Safari. Yeah, don't do it on Safari. It's dumb. Screw How have your drinking draws been going, Dave? I. It seems like it should be super successful for you, considering the guests that you guys have on lately. Amazing pulls, by the way. I can't complain. Uh, yeah? You know, it's, we're going to have a big letdown, I'm sure, next week. Um, who's who's next week? Uh, we haven't we haven't nailed them down yet. But, oh, I see. I mean, you can't go from, you know, who we've had, you know, to... I mean, there's 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 a limit, you know, a ceiling that we're gonna hit, and I think we, I think we hit it. Yeah. Uh, at, at this point, you know, I mean. Uh, well, who was on the most recent one, Dave? Oh, that's uh, Walt. That's in Kevin. Oh. Oh wow, that's great. I mean, uh, you know, if you, if you're now that you're. Uh, Techno, Mr. Techno Savvy, you know, we'd love to have you on. As to you, Klaus. Who, me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's involved? Do I have to drink? Uh, no. Yes, I do. That's when I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's not a requirement. You can do whatever you want, but, you know. It's close optional, Klaus. Formal attire only, also known as full on. No, it's a great, it's a great show, Dave. You guys are doing a bang up job. It's uh, who is the one that's facilitating all the questions? Is it Ben or Joe? Well, we we now Ben is now running the the visual you know like who gets picked you know yeah. like what jason's doing yeah um but i mean we all basically i mean with bill he 
I mean, Bill and Walt, you, you wind them up and then you let them go. <laughs> right. And you can't, you know, honestly, it's like, you know, we barely have enough space to uh, ask a question, you know, because then they just, they tell you amazing stories. So, right. You know, I mean, I actually like those guests because it kind of takes the pressure off me to say anything. I can just sit back and draw. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the most recent one I saw is the one of Walt, and that was great. Yeah, Bill was the same way, man. He, he just he just took took the uh, the reins and uh, just ran with it. And I was like, awesome. Don't have to do well, you got a pretty good sort of uh, you know conversation, Carrie and Dan, right? Or is Dan different when you guys are streaming? Because when well, we're in- the, the person who's really come across as you know. The, the most, uh, I don't know, the guy who asks the best questions, I guess, is uh, between Joe and uh, uh, Jeff. Really? Yeah. Fascinating. I tend to ask things that the, the guys don't want to talk about. <laughs> I, I was going to say, does it ever get spicy in that? Uh, in the- yeah, it happened uh, with uh, Bill uh, Thursday. I, yeah. I asked about a, a story about big numbers that wasn't a great story. <laughs> but he answered it, right? He was. He was no, he, he, oh, he was no? Like, no. I probably shouldn't talk about that. I'm like, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just wanted to know myself, you know. Right, right, right. It's, it's one of those things where you hear rumors about something, and you go, "Oh, you know, I want to, I want to find out more about that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it wasn't something that he was willing to, you know, he would have had to throw another artist under the bus because that was oh, a I see. story. I so, see. You know, Bill's a gentleman, turns out. Yeah. Sure, sure. You hear that, Klaus? You have to be a gentleman, too. I know, that really rules me out. I know. No I alcohol. To, I can't drink. I have to be a gentleman. <laughs> you, have to wear, you have to wear, you can't wear clothes. I, I, it's just not going to work. <laughs> so class is out. <laughs> I look forward to it, Dave. Yeah, it'll be good. What would be the theme if Klaus? Uh, what would you be drawing if uh, when Klaus comes on? Oh, there's a theme. Well, yeah, we. I mean, you know, a lot of times if it's a guest, we try to pick things that you've worked on that you're known for, and then we all draw. You know, I mean, essentially, you draw whatever you want, but. You know, if you were on, it probably we'd probably draw Dark Knight or something, you know, or one of the many things you worked on, you know. Well, it sounds like fun. It's every Friday night, right, Dave? No, we do it on Thursday. Thursday. Oh. Eric, have you done it? No, I've been a, a I've been an audience member at best. I've been a spectator. Yeah, if you like recognize them. if you recognize the caliber of people that are on there, well, I can't do it unless you do it, Eric. That's I less mean, than ideal. Know, that's that's, that's I, I I do not qualify to be on that. To, like, yeah, there's a lot of amazing people on there, and so I think I I look at it and I go like, okay, so imagine if at the very last second it runs super dry, then maybe maybe there's a way for me to hat throw my hat in the ring, but. It's one of those I things think, where eventually we're going to get to everybody. You know? right. I mean, actually, we, we're, we, we're, uh, we want to get some more women on there, too. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, eventually we'll get to everybody. Right. Yeah, how come Amanda hasn't been on yet and, uh, and Jimmy? Uh, they have. Oh, well, then so I missed suck it. You. Well, <laughs> then I somebody I hasn't been watching the fucking show, Jason. Yeah. That's true. Sir. You, sir. Hey, Don. Don says hello, Dave Johnson. What's up? Hello, just a Dave. Just, just a Dave. Dave. How's uh, Jeff doing down there, Don? Oh, that Don. Okay, that Don. I don't know if it was Delta Don or. Uh... We're trying to get Jeff to come on, on board. Has Dan ever done one of these? 
Yes, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. He came on the first mm. few weeks, and he yeah, said, uh, he said, uh, yeah, if Eric's there, he doesn't want to come on. Right. Yeah. He, he and I have a, you know, confrontational, antagonistic relationship. Well, also, you know, he ended up with uh, that cosplay girl. So. Oh, he did. Okay, so <laughs> he, can't, he can't be reminded of certain realities. <laughs> Mainly because he thought it was you. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, does, it, does anybody know if Neil Adams is doing any streaming or he does any drink and draws and stuff like that? Does he go online? Do you know? Does anybody know? I, I never, don't know. I don't think so. Is that uh, is that on brand for him? Is he the kind of guy that's willing to try out new things, Klaus? Do you know? I guess it depends on uh, if he's getting paid or not. <laughs> I see he's doing a few live streams for like auctions and stuff. Oh, Neil? Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, usually on Facebook, he does them every. Uh... Well, I haven't seen him in a bit, but I... oh, but he's done it a few times a week. Yeah. Well, it's just wondering because he goes to so many conventions. I was wondering if he picks up, you know, if he's been doing the online thing. Yeah, I think everybody has to learn, you know, you know, anybody who likes that extra income, they gotta, they gotta become yeah. technophiles real quick. Yeah. I think there's a, they have to pick up this soft skill very quickly. And it's just not a matter of like turning on the camera and hoping people appreciate your artwork. It has a lot to do with engaging as well. And that takes, a, a, you know, at any given time, a level of energy. I don't know. Dave, do you engage much, Klaus? Do you guys engage much when you guys are at shows and people are talking to you? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. M much more in person, Eric, than I do yeah. Say, online. Yeah. Yeah. So there, so you have the inherent muscle. But you do too, Eric, right? I mean, you're, I you're very. I don't. Uh, no, no, no. I'm. I'm. Uh, truth be told, your, I'm very standoffish. Your your fans? <laughs> All three of them. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I, I. Truth be told, I don't do it very well at shows. I actually end up hiding. You've at, been at told convention. that? Did you say you've been told that? No, no. Truth be told. Oh, truth I've, be told. Yeah, no. I've recognized that in myself. Jason is the one that has to come and wrangle me from whatever hole I'm hiding in, going like, hey, there's people out here waiting for you. Huh. I'm bad at it, what I'm saying. Well, I don't think that's true. I've seen you. It seems to me you're very adept at it. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, hey, Murray. Uh the drink and draw live streams are Thursday nights. If you go to YouTube and just do a uh, search for drink and draw, it'll pop up and you subscribe there. I think it's around what? Eight o'clock. Um, Pacific? Pacific time. Dave. No Pacific time. It's uh, six o'clock, six so o'clock, nine o'clock. Uh, Eastern time. Eastern. It looks like Adam had to bail. He's having some technical issues. So he'll try to come oh, back in later. Time. That makes sense. He was getting frustrated. I bet. Yeah, I don't know what good. that's like. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've been trying to get Klaus to set up uh, the last 24 hours. He's ready to kill me. <laughs> was it so, tough? Well, it looks like some of the parts are missing. You know, it's... I don't know. Have you ever tried to help your grandfather set up some technical gear? <laughs> it's kind of like... I'm it's kind of like that. <laughs> it's kind of like that. <laughs> Yikes. So maybe I'll just have to drive into the city and do it myself. It'll be quicker. As long as you say flattering things, I think he'll stick around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get it there. We'll get we'll get it done. We'll so what's the thing that what week. was the biggest what was the biggest holdup in the, in Klaus's setup? Um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, Eric. It yes. Was the 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 camera yeah. did not attach to the uh, that that swirling thing that it's supposed to attach to. You know what I'm talking about? I do not. With the with the silver knob at the end. Oh it's yeah 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 yeah. I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the attachment uh, we haven't been able to figure out yet. 
Yeah. Maybe, the cam- what is the camera that Klaus has? Uh, we got the 922 and then the Brio. So we got two of them. So which one is pointing down at his screen? Or was uh, pointing down at his drawing board? We're going to put the Brio down on the drawing board. And that, you guys can't figure out how to attach that to the to the camera mount that's on arm? Correct. We haven't gotten to that point yet. It's called uh, duct tape. How hard is it? <laughs> it, it? It's just not working. It just doesn't, it, you know, the camera falls off. Huh. Okay. Hmm. I have, I think I gave Jason the same model that you're messing with now, Klaus, and it happened to work. But it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't ultimately it doesn't matter. It's just got to find it. We've got to find right. out to screw that bad boy well, on there. We'll figure it out this week. We were doing it, you know, yesterday, and I spent like three hours on it, and that was enough time. So yeah, I genuinely believe that that's Jason's fault. So that's true. <laughs> Klaus said the same thing. Yeah. So. I love you, Eric. That's great. I'm, yeah, I'm con- <laughs> Maybe you can help us after Eric uh, to get it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Give me a call. Because I don't. Uh, I'm sure Eric has better things to do. Nah. Nah. He just got a family to take care of, and it's the freaking. It's just the pandemic. It's okay. I'm good. Let's get that camera set up. <laughs> 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 Let's make sure. <laughs> Klaus, we got a question. What are you drawing? What did you decide to draw, Klaus? A daredevil. A daredevil? Yeah. It's a, it's a uh, commission I had penciled at a convention. And, uh, well, I'm not sure. Can you see it? Am I just going to start from Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get. Well, we only have your front facing uh, yep. camera. Did you? Well, I, can, I can only see your face, Klaus. Good as that may be. Oh, is there that is... good? Yeah, oh, yeah. There... There's so no what, art component. Uh, that's strange because I have the cell phone attached to the laptop. I just sent you another link if you want to click it on the phone. I did. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> you see it now? No, you don't. Do you? No, not yet. Uh, I wonder what's going on. Um, you just have to... If you have the inclination class, you can sign off really quick and then sign back on again. I love watching Dave draw something that's not in his wheelhouse. Disney? Or ducks? Uh, no, it's, it, yeah, well, th- those in combination. But the fact that I don't think I've ever seen Dave draw that look. There we go, Klaus. Oh, we're getting an echo. Oh, we're getting an echo. <laughs> we screwed everything up. No, no, no. He, he, <laughs> he, he didn't hit the mute button on the f- cell phone. So he's got, there you go. Uh, okay, I'm going to yeah. go. Bye. <laughs> Hold on. I, I, I muted that for a second until he uh, gets his. It's just okay. interesting. Yeah, we have to mute one of them there, buddy. Oh, boy. Oh, sorry. Did you sorry, have guys. any of these? Uh, did you have any of these technical issues when you when you first started, Dave? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We okay. But then we started threatening bodily harm and people got online. (laughs) Yeah, I remember my first setup, man. It was a nightmare to try to make all the cameras work. To get all the overlays to work. And thank God we don't have anything like that for, at least I don't, for this show or for this stream. When I first start. When I first started streaming uh, on Twitch, I had three cameras going at the same time. One at the art, one at the tools, and then one at my face. And that was just a lot to coordinate because OBS Studio, which is the uh, programmer app that I use, is typically just, or, you know, most optimized for PC. 
and since I work on a Mac, it takes a little bit more finagling. I just downloaded that uh, software, but it seems a little too complicated. No, it's not. It's it really isn't. Once you understand what you want, what you need it to do, right? Um, so it's better to use than Streamyard. I don't know. I wouldn't say that. I mean, for streaming, it's what I prefer. Whenever I'm recording uh, myself um, doing original art, it's what I use. But whether or not it's good for what we're doing now, I can't be sure. I haven't tried it. Hey, Windsor Smith made this look so easy. How did he do this eyeball? Okay, here we go. Hey, Dave, Roger saying thanks for doing Scrooge. Oh, is that what? For yep. Is that for them? It's for this gentleman, yep. Right on. So he should be happy. Yeah, as I was saying, I've never I don't know if I've ever seen Dave draw a a Disney character. Dave? Yeah, this might be my first. Yeah. Uh Phil, we're using a live stream. It's the it's not live stream, sorry, uh StreamYard, StreamYard. is the is the the platform. Does it feel a little clunky? well, you don't have a point of reference, right, Jason? This is the only one you've ever used for streaming. Yeah, correct. The, Adam wants me to, I guess, use uh, Zoom. Mm. I guess he didn't have, uh, he had better results. Oh, yeah. On uh, on that one, but Dan had oh. recommended this one, which works pretty well once you get it. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Zoom. But I like this because it, it sends it out to a few different platforms. So right. YouTube, has, Facebook. Yeah. All that stuff. Does OBS and, and and those ones do the same thing? It can, I think. I'm not sure. Again, don't quote me. I only use it for. I only ever use it for the one thing, which is streaming for, to Twitch. So, um, I couldn't tell you about that. But now, let's see. If, uh, Did you guys that. hear about the um, Zoom's privacy issues? Yes. Yep. Uh, a hacker got into the New York Rangers live stream, and, uh, <laughs> and just it wasn't good. No, they, uh, one guy just started, um, uh, it was one of the new rookies or, you know, new signings and it was an African American gentleman and started like spewing racist crap on, oh, on their boy. thing. So, uh, the FBI got involved. It was pretty intense. It was unfortunate. So there's like weird, you know, hate crime stuff that, uh, they're taking part in. Hey Klaus, can you hear us? I can. Oh, uh, there we go. Do you see my camera? Uh, my yep. Right. Is yep. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. It's a little far away, but we can. Uh, right, right, right. Sorry about that. Yeah. It'll be better next week. Next week we'll get the the whole yeah. setup uh, yeah. going. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you guys are gonna be jealous. I'm always jealous of Klaus. Yeah, it's got a nice apartment. Look, look at this. I'm moving, by the way. Oh yeah, where are you going? Are you really? Either New Jersey or California. Oh, that's right. We invited Klaus to come live with us. In your well, home. Well, I'm not gonna live <laughs> with you. In your home. Okay, California. <laughs> it is. California. All right. What part of California? I don't know. Somewhere in LA, you know. Nice. In that area, maybe, maybe a little, maybe a little uh, further north. I don't know. You're tired of the city. You know, all my favorite things in New York are, are not going to survive. So, you know, like, what's the point? Well, some new things will come in, right? But they won't be his new favorites, I'm, Jason. I'm 82, Jason. How much longer do you have to wait for me? Uh, I need another uh, at least 20 years, so. Uh, well. You hear that, Klaus? You keep yourself healthy and alive for you Jason. Yeah. That's, that's why I sent you those masks. That's not gonna fucking depress you, man. Yeah. You know, Eric, you are not wrong. You are not. <laughs> I gotta keep myself alive for Jason. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's investing in cryogenics, I think, at this point. Yeah, we're gonna do one of those Disney things. Uh, put you in a crypto, you know, in a uh, freeze. Uh, carbonite. We're going to carbonite you up. <laughs> nice. 
How is that comic book industry doing, by the way? Uh, it's hanging in there, I think. Yeah? Is it back to operating Only in some previous? states. Ah, okay. So people are starting to sell things again. Good. Yeah. It uh, could be better, I think, as far as, as, as much as I can tell. Better in what way? It could be, well, just distribution. I think I heard Diamond should be back up and running in the next few weeks, if yeah. not sooner. May 20th. Yeah. May 20th, right? Oh, good. So hopefully uh, a lot of the titles will get back up and running. Are they still staggering their payments towards their clients or no? You know, I'm not sure about that. From what I heard, I think they were trying to get payments out so they wouldn't be in breach of any contracts. Yeah. That's a tough situation to be in, man. Yeah, I and mean, what are you going to do? It's, it's, uh, it's where we're at. Yeah. Speaking of uh, paying bills and the economy and all that, I had a thought the other day that you know, instead of using the term "too big to fail," we should change it to too big to not make any profits. <laughs> Why is that? Dave? <laughs> well, that's basically, you know, all the bailouts, they're, these companies aren't going away. They don't need a bailout. They just need money to keep paying their investors. Oh, sure. I mean, it, it's, you know, I'm sure you've heard it before, but it's like all these companies that are making billions of dollars and they can't even survive two weeks, you know? Hmm. It's not that they don't have the money; they just don't want to. They don't want to have to suffer, and right. so they go to the government and go, oh, wait, we're, poor, "We're poor, we're poor now." You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like screw you, man. You know, I mean, when you hear all these big ass, you know, restaurant chains that are getting bailout money, and I'm like, you know, it's are there are there really restaurant chains well, getting bailed out? Yeah, yeah, and Yikes. it's like. How dare you, you know? I don't know. Well, well, there's also reports now that some churches have been getting bailouts. Yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, if, that's you're, even church, worse. You, if you're getting a government bailout, then you're no longer a church. You're a business. So you can, you can, you know, that means you should be taxed and, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. Especially if you're doing political stuff, which a lot of them are doing. Um, that's not, you know, that's, that's not what it was set up to be, you know, so, but nobody cares. Some well, people I don't do. think anybody can, uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, look, well, let me say this. I don't think anybody can deny that this, you know, pandemic has revealed a lot of inequities and a lot of unfairness and a lot of, um, you know, cheating that yeah. goes on every day, you know, mm. uh, just every day as, as, as a matter of course. It's yeah. Shocking. Yeah, it drives me nuts seeing it. And, and, you know, when I see people excuse it, you know, because, you know, their party's in power. And I'm like, right. You know, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, uh, yeah, this is Dave, you're talking about, you know, just the the uh, the hypocrisy of uh, oh, sure. legislation and what what is a priority and what is yeah. not, and I what mean, group gets fed and what group doesn't. It's 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 so unfair. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm always amazed when there's not a an uprising, you know, to the the people that are most affected. You know, it's like that propaganda machine has worked so well that they think, you know, a, a, a shitty, you know, millionaire is like one of them, you know? Yeah. I mean, I actually had an argument with my mom, you know, just about it. And I was like, all you got to do is look at old, you know, she, she thinks everything is now fake news. <laughs> Um, and I'm like, well, all you got to do is go back and look at old news 
uh, stories on Donald Trump to see what kind of person he is long before even 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 thought about becoming president. And, he, you know, he's a horrible person. I suspect that your mother trends towards uh, conservative, Dave. Yeah, you can say that. So Thanksgivings must be fun. Yeah, we don't even do those anymore. That was one of the, you know, one of the uh, ironic or funny things about, you know, the last election was because as a, as a New Yorker, we, we've all been exposed to, you know, uh, Donald Trump. And and none of us could figure out what was the appeal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get people that were fed up with whatever, but sure. I mean, it's like, I don't know. Like Could it be that simple then? It was just everything that wasn't there before, and therefore they voted for that instead, right? Well, it's like you're fed up with a rat infestation, so you you elect the biggest rat in the world to take care of it. <laughs> I guess we shouldn't be political. I know it's like... No, I'm trying to. I'm trying to unpack what you're saying. Like mentally, like is it is it because they elected the biggest rat, or did they elect somebody that told them, "Hey, I understand your rat infestation." Well, I mean, as opposed to like people who come off a tiny bit elitist and a tiny bit like you know removed uh, from uh, the quote unquote every every person's every man's plight, right? The rat infestation plight. I don't know. I, I look at it as a, a holdover from George Bush, you know, who hmm. came from a millionaire family and mm -hmm. never suffered and never really had to work for a living. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden he's a guy that you could drink a beer with. And I'm like, yeah. did that happen? Right, you know, right, right, right. That's you know, some good campaigning. Yeah, yeah. It's good propaganda. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't, I don't think we can underestimate, and I, I mean this with all, all my, you know, uh, facility with language, but I don't think we can underestimate the profound effect that The Apprentice TV show had in uh, catapulting this guy yeah. into, into some sort of a reputation of Oh, he's a successful businessman who's going to help us and, mm. and make things work. Because mm -hmm. that, that was his persona on the TV show. And as a New Yorker, you know, we all knew that was nonsense. Yeah. But, but the rest of the country didn't have that experience as a New Yorker. So they viewed him through the lens of this TV show. Yeah. And, and, and you can't underestimate the power of that, you know, For that sure. the creation of that uh, persona. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, TV is, uh, you know, that's that's the thing. You know, if you're on mm -hmm. TV, you know, that's it. That's, you know, that's all you need. Yep. Uh, it does do a lot of heavy lifting for you, right? By way of like the, the person that you want to establish, you know? Well, By the way, Dave... Uh, the now and they, they want to be uh, Kim Kardashian, you know? Mm. Their top of their goal in life. And, oh, dude, there's an entire generation I mean, that, that I mean, leverages that concept. Dan's, you know, Dan Panosian's, uh uh, ultimate dream was to be on Baywatch. You know, I mean, Dan's saying he's fed up with you. By the way, uh, yeah, Dan. I know. Oh, well, keep that. in mind, <laughs> keep in mind, like Dan's ultimate dream is only indicative of Dan. You know, <laughs> true. Hey Wayne, how's it going? It, all, it also matches Dan's personality. That makes sense. That's that, that makes sense for Dan. Is Dan in chat? Uh, he's in the chat. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying again to come on. I'm going to go. Can you block him? Yeah. We can't, uh, can you hack his bank account? We can try. Let's try.
So are there still uh, conventions on the calendar that have yet to send out the we're not doing this this year? Who haven't yes. canceled yet? Really? Yeah. Which ones? That's on your calendar, let's say, because that's a lot, an awful lot of conventions. Uh, let's well, the bigger ones, obviously, New York. New York um, hasn't canceled yet. I don't think New York's officially canceled yet. Mm-hmm. Plus, their okay. rescheduled uh, Seattle show hasn't been canceled yet in August. That is that is a lot of optimistic that's thinking. The, that's the Emerald Crown in August. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Plus, let's see, uh, Terrificon in at the Mohegan Sun we were supposed to go to. I don't think that's been canceled yet. You think they're just holding out, see, seeing how... I think they're... Yeah, they must just be waiting for the official word. From a show promoter's uh, perspective, Jason, that's got to be an expensive thing to cancel, right? Oh, like, absolutely. It's going to... guys are going to take a beating. Right. Yikes. Yeah. It's not going to be good. Hopefully, they'll be able to recoup some of their expenses. How? Well, they can break contracts because of the pandemic. I think that's what they're waiting for is to come from the government, you know, from the local oh, I government. Get it. I get it. So once they, you know, say there's, you can't officially do anything, then they can go to their contracts and say these are now vault, you know, no, uh, voided. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So they're waiting for the legality of it to kick in. So they're not in in breach, right? Yeah, I guess it's just a liability issue. Chris says that um, the NC Comic Con is supposed to go on in November 14th, 15th. So hopefully they'll be able to go forward in Carolina in the Carolinas. It's It's Tommy's show, no? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's one that Tommy usually helps out with. Yeah, let's hope. So this is tentatively. Well, here's hoping. Yeah, fingers crossed. I was supposed crossed. to go to, supposed to go to Sweden, man. And looking at the headlines, and that's Sweden didn't do any lockdown, and they are suffering now. Are they really? Yeah, yeah. They they have the. I think they're now the highest uh, death rate and uh, infection rate per capita of any European city. Um, More yeah. than Spain and Italy. Yeah, they they made some oh. bad decisions. Um, well, actually. I'll be back in one second. Dave, that might be a um, that might be an update, but I heard I heard that uh, yesterday or the day before that the UK had the highest death rate, even higher than Italy. Wow! I don't so know, Sweden I don't know. might 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 be surprising it- the UK at this point. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was. I mean. Whether whether or not it's the highest or not, it's definitely really bad over there right now. Yeah, they're they're getting their, their asses kicked. So their 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 idea of herd immunity is not particularly working out that well. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the case. So, so what does that prove? It really does prove that social distancing works, right? I mean, that oh hell works. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it works. I mean, anybody who says it doesn't work is crazy. I mean, the way I look at it, it's more about keeping the hospitals from being over overburdened. Yes, absolutely. You know? I mean, I think we're all eventually going to get it, um, but there's no rush to get it, you know? Right. But, you know... Then you look at beaches here in California, and apparently there is a rush to get it. So, <laughs> they're just trying to get it over with. It. Yeah, maybe they're the smart ones. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't sound like a like a picnic. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't want it at all, man. You don't want it at all. I've been doing my best to. You know, stay in the house. Outside of the obvious things that uh, it brings on, Dave, from like, do you find yourself a bit, uh, uh, I don't want to say over careful, but you know what I'm getting at? Like, is it, is it? I'm not over careful, but, you know, I definitely, you know, I'll, you know, wash my hands a lot more and, you know, make sure if I go out and I touch anything, I definitely come home and I wash my hands, you know, Mm. Uh, Mm. like a villain. Um, so, 
but I like to get out. I, you know, I, I got a convertible, so I, you know, just out of sanity, I'll just go out and drive, you know? Right. Um, I think I'm pretty safe doing that. So, so far, no complaints, you know? So far, so good. Yeah. yeah I don't You're... seem to have any, uh, any symptoms. So. I asked because um, uh, my wife went out yesterday to get some to get some plants for the house, right? Yeah. Obviously, observing as much of the the, the safety things that you're supposed to do. But I think people, at least in my area, as she explained it, are, have become a bit more. Mm, she, the way she read it was like standoffish and critical. You know, like they all kind of looked at her weird. Um, not because of anything that she was doing not because of anything that she was doing, but because of, you know, the way just the way the store is, right? It brings them in closer proximity uh, than what's been recommended as like, what, six feet, eight feet? Yeah. So the moment you break that sort of six foot barrier, they start looking at you and it's like, hey, I can't help it. I've got to try to get by you here, you know? Yeah. Well, I found out my, my local grocery store that I always go to, uh, the Rock and Roll Ralph's, um, they just had a they had a confirmed case from the employees, so I was kind of like, "Ah, shit!" But, oh, they did. Yes. Yeah. So I wasn't too happy about that. But what can you do? I'm also careful to sort of uh, understand whenever somebody or whenever the reports that come in is like these things have been reported in this area. Right, there are X amount of reported cases, um, but it's and they, and I have a healthy respect for it. So so take this with grain of salt. Um, be, just because you are uh, uh, infected with it, it's not a you know it's not like be, becoming a zombie, right? Yeah. Right. So I don't know. I'm I'm I think it's you know we have a tendency to to read those numbers and get really really caught up on the infection rate. I pay attention to the death rate. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's not like AIDS or anything. I mean that was you get that, and that's yeah, that was for pretty sure. Difficult, you know, yeah. But still, I mean, you hear about healthy people dying from it. For sure. Yeah. You, know, you want to take the the risk of are you healthy enough to get it and not suffer any consequences? Sure. I mean, more often. Than than anything, I'm thinking, do I do I want to get hit with a medical bill? Oh yikes! Yeah, are they? Is it that? Is that level? Is it that level of a consequential? Like you're gonna get hit with a oh, yeah. an insurmountable medical bill? Really? Yeah, I mean, any wow. any stay in a hospital is is you know not cheap. Yeah, and I don't have the best health care, so I know a lot of that's coming back on me. So. I'd rather, once again, if I can avoid it by staying in. Makes sense. Stay in. Yeah, makes, makes, makes total sense. Uh, speaking of which, if you see the little scroll there, frontlinefoodsqueens.org uh, and queensfeedshospitals.com, you're taking donations to help feed uh, the nurses and hospital workers in Queens. Uh, it also helps the local restaurants there um, stay afloat by feeding those medical workers. So check it out. Make a little donation if you can. Pretty sure Scrooge McDuck won't be making any donations. <laughs> any donations? Yeah. I like that you're painting more, Dave. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm getting more comfortable with it again. It's like figuring out the materials, like how they interact with certain other materials. What was your uh, uh, media of choice day? Was it always uh, acrylic? Well, it was a combo. I basically learned how to paint from uh, Stealth Breeze. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so it's, it's not a bad teacher. Yeah. Um, you know, learning to do the setup before you even start to get to the acrylic stage is the most important, you know most important thing you can do setting up all your 
shadows and uh, mid tones. Mm -hmm. And I do that in Photoshop now too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of like a uh, a rough sketch of it, right? What's that? Okay. Thing? Setting up your blacks, I mean. Yeah, my blacks and my mid tones. Um, I mean, the way I Photoshop now is when I put in the line art. You know, I basically start with a scanned piece of chipboard, which is kind of like a nice medium brown, and that darkens all the colors up. Um, so already, just that one step is already giving me midtone colors. Right. Um, right. Um, and then I'll do a shadow layer and multiply on top of that to establish my light source. And then, um, which is also very quick. Yeah, I just use one color, you know, uh, and uh, multiply. So it, it reacts to all the colors I'm putting down or I've already put down. And then all that's left is pulling out some highlights, which is, you know, super fast. Kind of become my style, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's like a three-step process until you get to the uh, to the highlights, right? Yeah, but it's it's all super fast. Yeah. Know? Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I'm not the the most proficient guy out there. You know, I mean, there's guys that can render a million times better than me, but. I don't know if that's necessarily the uh, the end all be all, you know. Well, yeah, I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask. Was that your goal? You know, like ultimately, you have to define like what good no, looks I like mean, for you, right? My goal is doing things that I think I can do. You know. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. You know the the hyper render guys. I, I just I don't know. You know, I, I don't want to spend the whole day drawing one inch. You know, working on a one inch square. Of, of a painting, you yeah, know? yeah. Um, ultimately, I don't know. You, you kind of have to like: Am I going to be a hyper realist, or am I going to be a cartoonist? You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of shift back and forth between those two. You know. Like, yeah. There's a part of me that wants to go more realistic and. But ultimately, that's, I don't think that's my jam. You know, I, right. I'm very good at it. Right. Is it, is it safe to say then, then that you can do it, but it's not yeah, I really I think in a, a lot of ways that hyper-realism is a, is a trap. It just really boxes you in. In what way? It, it, it becomes stiff after a while. Like, I, I don't know. I, I'd rather see something, I don't know, um, well, so like it's an animator, or, you know, some you know, drawing that has a little bit of life to it. Yeah, precisely. I, I, um, that was always my biggest problem with people inking me back when I started was they would they would ink me too tight. You know, like certain things I want tight, and in other things I want a little bit of energy in it. You know, mm -hmm. like I think there was a point in time where a lot of anchors were so myopic about every line being tight, you know, and not looking at the whole picture. Yeah. You know, they, they were just obsessing about, I got to make this line perfect and, and, <laughs> and, and not looking at the whole picture and, and it would suffer, you know? Mm. So. Is that why you sort of uh, went in and started inking yourself, Dave, later yeah. on in your career? Yeah. I got tired of, uh, you know, the results that I was yeah. getting. And uh, eventually, you know, I started out with just kind of inking the faces. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it just kind of grew from there. Wait, what do you mean? You mean you would, you would ink the face and then you'd hand it off to whomever it was that was inking it? Yeah. Okay. Did you have to change the way you penciled once you started uh, doing your own stuff, inking your own stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, geez, I hardly. I mean, but you've seen me work. I, I, I don't put a lot of uh, pencil work into it because it's almost like I feel like I'm drawing it twice at that point. Mm.
Well, Wayne's in agreement. He likes when you paint too, Dave. Well, this is his uh, commission piece, right? Uh, no, this is Rogers. Oh. We got a. So does this mean that Eric is going to stream more because I miss his streams? Says. Oh. Whoa, that's dirty. This is well, this. <laughs> it can't be. This is the furthest. This is his most. That I'll do this is to hang out with these gentlemen. But me doing it again in any other capacity is going to be rare. Well, we we appreciate coming in and spending time with us. I used to hate inking, <laughs> and I say that as honestly as I can, knowing full well Klaus is in the room. <laughs> but I used to hate it. I'm not, I'm not holding it against you. <laughs> I, I, I think you won't hold it against me now. I think you'll go to sleep tonight. No. And then right before you pass out, you're like, that piece of shit. <laughs> not at all. No, I'm just kidding. I, 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 no, I used to, I think I used to you, hate it. You I are hate enormously it. talented. And as of today, by the way, uh, you guys are incredibly talented. It, if I were half as good as you guys, I'd be twice as happy. I'll tell you that. Oh, you will. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm mathing. I'm mathing that out in my head right now. But no, Where? I used to hate it. I used to. I used to not because I. It was so difficult to to get whatever it was that was in my head onto paper. And I think it's it's a curse of what Dave just said, which is, I wanted that thing look to to look so super pretty, and like super tight and just super controlled. And then one day, and I think this was a saving grace, it's when I gave up and I said, ah, fuck this shit. And I started inking it like a mess. And I go, oh, there you go. I'm having fun. I couldn't produce the line. And there was one, and it's one individual that I held as the sort of the, the example, right? To, and it was Kevin Nolan. And I wanted to have that Kevin Nolan line so bad, like really, really bad. And because I couldn't replicate it, I hated the experience because I wasn't learning from it. I was emulating it. And uh, yeah, it took me saying like, ah, God, fuck this shit. You know, there's only one of those guys. And just started inking like it was fun again. And, and I remember this, uh, we were in it. This is, this is a story about Dave and myself. I remember this, we were in at Warner Brothers at the time in, uh, God, what mall was that, Dave? What was the name of the- Oh, uh, the Galleria. The Galleria, right. The Galleria. And we were, Come on. Yeah, the I'm Galleria. sorry. And so we were in the bigger conference room and Dave was looking through my portfolio and he said, and I still tell this story to as many people who listen to it. He's like, you can't draw an attractive woman to save your life. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you that. cannot draw an attractive woman to save your life. So maybe you should go learn how to do that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he was pointing at my portfolio at the time, which looked like I, I, I it was like the best representation of like potato people. You know, they were just like <laughs> hacked. At, they were hacked out of a potato, just hard angles and zero femininity to them whatsoever. And Dave, I think, was the one that it was between you or a friend of mine who had said like, just just copy Claire Wendling, just copy Claire Wendling. And so I thought like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And in that exercise of like, just straight up copying what, what an attractive woman looks like in that context. And I think that, you know, Claire is, is influenced by people like Frank Frazetta and so on. I kind of caught on, I was like, oh, I get it. I get what, Dave was talking about in as far as like, oh, that has some really great uh, uh, appeal, right? And that started that started me down the road of having fun with like drawing and inking and rendering, because previous to that, all I was doing was emulating and just having like the biggest middle finger towards everybody who said, oh, you'll never get a job in this industry. But eventually, when I finally did get that job in comics. There was nothing else. I didn't set up any more goals for myself to try to get better. It was just like, oh, yeah, no, I'll just, you know, as as uh, ham-fisted as I can, shove down this style that I'm doing 
down your throat, but there was no, and I think, I think this was at the core of what Dave was saying. It's like, there, you, there's no way to make this, there's no longevity in this stuff that you're doing. There's just, it, it, it brackets you immediately to only be usable in certain titles, it's certain looks and certain books, whatever. And I didn't understand that back then. I was like, I was still in that fuck you stage of my career. I was like, fuck you, you guys denied me for so long. And didn't realize there needs to be, and pardon the term, there needs to be a more commercial aspect to your work. For sure. Yeah, you and I didn't it. understand that. I didn't yeah. understand that at all, you know, because I was stubborn and, and just didn't want to listen. But when I started really trying to wrap my mind around what that commercialism, quote unquote, meant, I was like, oh, there's a way that I can make it commercial and still be sort of proud of what I did, you know? I mean, I don't remember giving you that advice, but I do remember telling you early on you needed to put the pencil down. Mm -hmm. point, you know, you mm -hmm. were you were throwing literally the kitchen sink onto every page on every panel, and and it, it just you know I I do remember saying you got, you got to give the eye a break. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you're you're you know people when they look at art, they're only going to see. I mean, honestly, unless they sit there and study it, they're only going to see at the very most 50% of what you're throwing down. Right. You were, you were throwing down so much detail right. that it was pointless, you know? A yeah. lot was just going to get lost. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree. So there was no break for the eye to rest on, you know? It, you, were, you were cramming every, every available inch with detail. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I think it's because I still had not and not to say that I don't have as much, but I I still wanted to prove a point back then, you know, yeah. that it was possible, that it was doable, and a bunch of guys are just like, you know, putting in cruise control and so on. And that's just the, the arrogance of being young, you know? Yeah, but that's I like back. both is was doing cruise control, you know. Oh yeah, exactly. Imagine, imagine the uh, that attitude. Um, yeah. so I knew it was I mean, now I know how laughable it is but back then i was like dave i'm st i'm st i am just gonna keep fucking doing this and it's <laughs> and didn't and i you know did you walk away when i when i told you that and go what does that guy know no to truth be told i thought to myself yeah. what does that really mean like what does it mean for me to to draw an attractive woman like is it you know, I was trying to think of who drew quote unquote attractive women back then in, in as far as like what's easy, what's in arm's reach, which is oftentimes like comics, right? And I was like, who drew an attractive woman? But I didn't like the way they do that. They did it, yeah. right? Because it would immediately mark me as the person who's trying to do X, right? Yeah, I, I um, mean, you know, become an Adam use clone, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I had to really kind of, you know, deconstruct what that meant for me. And I think it was when, I bought my first Claire Wendling book and I was like, oh, I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. I'll just copy this for eight months and see, <laughs> you know, and see what sticks. Hey, it worked, you know. It definitely, it was, definitely helped. I mean, yeah, so. it really did help. It got me out of the mindset that every portion needed to be rendered. Everything that you're talking about right now, like every portion doesn't need to be. Like I, I, I've said this a handful of times when you're like when I'm dis when I'm drawing a picture, I imagine things in like cones of interest or like circles of interest. Sure. Right. So like the further away I get from that interest, the less precious I am about how tight that rendering could be. Right. Yeah. Whereas before, I'd be like, see this fucking tar t car tire right here? Oh, you're going to love this hubcap, you know? And you're like, that's stupid. Yeah, it's, it's also like the Frank Rosetta thing, you know? It's, yeah, perfect. You know, yep. You focus on what's important, and foliage and, you know, rocks are not as important. So you let mm -hmm. them have more ethereal, and, and you, you, your eye goes right to what's important, which is usually... Mm -hmm some woman's gorgeously rendered butt or <laughs> and a right. guy's glistening chest. I mean, you know, so, and I'm going to put you on mute. I'm going to run a hairdryer. So yep. Wayne's got a question. Uh, when the books start coming out again, what projects can we see from you guys? What? Ask Are the you other two guys. <laughs> oh. okay. Well, class, you're still working on pages, right? And we can see one there. Uh 
Uh, yeah, I'm working on, oh, that's right, you can see that. Yeah, uh, that's today's work. Um, I'm working on uh, Action Comics, who are Dom Jr., of course, and that's going to go for another couple of months, I think. And yeah. then I'm working on uh, the second volume of Sacred Creatures, which is probably some of the best work I've done, I think. That's great, think man. So. Um, so that'll be out in the spring, I think, uh, for next year. Um, but the rest is a... Um, uh, a surprise, you know. I, I don't really know what's going to happen after action. We'll see. And there, what's your 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 daytime job is over at Riot Games, Eric? Right? Uh, emotionally, mentally, physically, yeah. What do you do? What is what is it you do there for the for the they fans out there? They have an internal world building team that helps to make their IP cohesive sustainable and scalable depending on the project i'm part of establishing that in this most simplest way and it's probably not uh uh comprehensive enough it's it's the team that helps to establish an ip bible right so that every team thereafter every product thereafter has a level of consistency that is protectable and unique to to riot hmm. interesting yeah. That's that's what you're working on, Eric. I missed the first part. Uh, I work as a as a concept artist for video games. Right, right, right. So, yeah. uh, oh, so th you were talking about it, it, uh, about that in general. Then. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the team that I work on, which is the the world building team over at Riot. Um, I often uh, keep that out of like conversation only because I, I didn't even know this. I was, I was just as naive as to the impact and global reach of a video game. And when I first got interviewed for that company, I had no idea who they were. I mean, zero idea of, of who they were. I was, my brain was like, oh, this isn't Mario. This isn't, you know, this isn't Metal Gear. I've never heard of Riot Games until I'd realized, you know, their player base is uh, uh, the best sort of fanatical, the best sort of loyal, you know? They oh. love that game to death. And it's massive. It's, you know, I can't remember what the daily player, you know, the daily player count is, but it's in the, I, would, I think it was in it's, the millions. It's gotta daily, be in the millions. You know? Yeah. Well, hang tight. We got, a, we got a special uh, guest coming in that wants to say hello. Let's see. Oh, right there, on. there he is. Hey! Hello. Oh is boy! <laughs> hey Dan. Hello, hello Dan. Uh, you guys are talking a little smack about. It. The only one who's civil in here is Klaus. Hey, what are you talking about? What a what a I don't. I think, you're mis uh, I think you're misrepresenting my intentions towards you, Dan. Uh, and, and and Dan. You know my uh, that's not going to last long, right? I know. Now that I'm here, <laughs> yeah. yeah now, now it's now I jinxed. See the gen the kind of gentleman that Klaus is. He doesn't talk shit about you unless you're in the room. So now, now I'm that in you're in it. the room. Yeah. Um. How are you, Dan? Ask how you guys are doing because I've already been listening. It sounds like like COVID's treating you guys fantastically. I don't think it's COVID in specific, Dan. I don't think COVID comes over to my house and says, hey, how are you doing? You need some bagels. No, it sounds like you send your wife out to get a COVID. When you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, I, that's what I do. That's not what COVID does. I, <laughs> I send her out. Um, no, actually, I came on board to critique a little bit of the drawing, Eric. Um, I've been getting, you know, thanks to the Drink and Draw live stream, I've been getting pretty popular lately, and it's gone to my head, and now I'm kind mm. of a big shot. I really appreciate the fact that you're self-promoting right now. Continue. It's very in character, very on brand. Continue. <laughs> so, so now that my head had swollen, and, and probably rightly so because of yeah. the uh, you know popularity of the you show, right. I feel I finally have a have a right to take a look at your stuff and really give you the critique you need. Oh, now you years. now you have you feel that way. So the, all yeah. the other ones were illegitimate. All the other times that you've done it previously, it didn't come from a good place. I don't, I don't know if everybody knows, but. Um, a lot of times I'll be pr like some of the reason Eric has gotten as good as he has over the years is because I'm usually there saying add this line, so erase that line, you know, and, and it, you know, sometimes he just redraws it altogether. Yeah. I'll just send him and I go draw it this way. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Eric, do you accept that premise? I do only because it makes 
Dan shut up faster. You know what I mean? Oh, I see. Like it, it, it gets it. It gets it out of his system faster. If I, if I, it's like adding incendiaries into an already out of control fire. I'm like, I'm not going to add anything to that. I'm just going to agree. Yeah. Dan, the last time that he and I spoke seriously, he opened up with, I don't know if you know this, Eric, but I'm also an, an auteur now. I I don't know if you've heard of my award win, soon to be award winning, uh, uh, you know, penned and drawn uh, slots. And I was like, no, Dan, I have never heard of slots. <laughs> and he proceeded for the next three hours to explain to me what genius it was. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, how many how many awards has he won? Soon uh, to be, he said. He prompted soon that. To soon to be. Soon is a relative <laughs> term, Dave. <laughs> Posthumously. Yeah. Dan, are you going to draw anything, or are you all talk? Well, ah, suck I, am, it, Dan. I mostly talk, <laughs> as you can imagine. But uh, no, I am drawing. It's just I, I'm working on a top secret project for uh, Skybound that I'm not allowed to talk about. Are you not allowed to talk about it, or do you well, just, just need more prompting? Skybound, so already I'm in breach. Oh, all right. I um, thought it would just take a little bit of uh, finagling, Dan. You know what? I'm kind of a big deal. Yep. There it is. <laughs> I, I got to go. <laughs> um. Well, you're supposed to help recruit uh, Klaus, Dan, to do the next drink and draw. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, how about that? Huh? Yeah. I'm not getting it. You, you, if you could go on, on Jason's live stream, then you can. Ours is the same um stream stream yard based program no it's not the standards are much lower here oh uh, okay. <laughs> that's true yeah <laughs> somebody said slots is legit genius ban that person immediately ban them twice uh, uh, <laughs> dan's known for making fake accounts so yeah it's probably me <laughs> that's him it's that's him typing it's on the side box. it's from a russian troll farm yeah. Um, Has Dan made me better in the time that we've hung out at shows? Ooh. I'm asking that. Has he? Has he contributed anything as profound as Dave typically has in the history that we've known each other? Mm. Mm, that's tough. When did yeah. you first meet uh, Dan, Eric? You know, it's such a traumatic experience. It's ingrained in your memory. No, I've I've actively covered it up oh, with as many hats. Oppressed. <laughs> when did we meet first, Dan? We met at Glenn Danzig's studio. Can you, that can't can be true. Show us touch yeah. you. Yeah, show you us on this chart where you touched me first. <laughs> yeah, when did I first touch you? Um, <laughs> you, were working at, you were working actually at Glenn's studio. I saw you in the offices. Uh huh. And. Uh, I was talking to Glenn about a very important subject, Kung Fu. Um, well, for the home audience, that's uh, Glenn who? Uh, Glenn Danzig. There you go. The Glenn Danzig. The. And Don't forget that part. You're contextu Glenn contractually Glenn. obligated to say that part. Glenn is a big fan of Eric's for some reason. and mm -hmm. uh, Well, back then, Eric worked really cheap. So. Yeah, that was probably it. And I'd like to get I'd like to get Glenn on the uh, show. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, he'd be a character. He's Anyone a big, but Eric. He's a big yeah, art collector too. Movie. He really is. All right. Now, do you remember his assistant? That that one. What was her name? She was kind of a she was a dominatrix. The the Amazonian Ruthie. Yeah. Ruthie was her name. Oh yeah. Was um, Dan? Was it this young lady? Oh boy. That was her. That was her. <laughs> <laughs> They're never gonna let that photo die. Klaus, did you see it? Klaus. Yeah, he saw it. Oh, he saw oh. it already. Okay. Yeah, he saw it earlier. Well, it's. That's okay. We got We'll have to get one of you, Dan. But this oh, this gentleman, Dave. God, he looks like he's really envisioning the future of comics right there. 
he's got is it. that a, is that a real picture of Dave or is that like yeah. oh I'm like crap. It's hard to tell sometimes between you and Anthony Edwards, depending on. That's Dave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that guy. That's Does that change Dave. your impression of him, Klaus? That's Dave Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way that you say it right now. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. That doesn't it is. Nothing like him. No, that's actually a nice looking fellow. Well, you know, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get <laughs> what happened? What happened to Adam Kuber? Did you guys just? Did you uh, he uh, he was having some technical issues, so we're gonna um, have to get back to him next week. We're gonna... Was that technical issue, Dave? Uh, he just doesn't like Dave. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. I'm drawing a very high-profile character, Eric, and a lot of times what I'll do is knock it off. <laughs> Every <laughs> time that you follow up a statement with comma, Eric, I know you're about to fucking <laughs> say stupid shit. Well, knock it off. What happens when I draw a character or any character? When, when I I don't know how you approach drawing, but when I approach drawing, I draw the figure from the ground up. I do the skeleton. Yeah, that's I spend not a lot of time on the character without clothing. <laughs> I'll put the clothing on later, but I want to get the the essence of the body down. And so that means uh -huh. drawing the anatomy um, uh -huh. as a naked male or female. So I, yeah. I spend a lot of attention um, understanding the figure, massaging yeah. the figure. Right. Are you That's implying that I don't do that? Because you said, I don't know how you do it. Well, I, I, it's a look like, I mean, let's take a look at your drawing. Jason, could you put his on, on the screen? Sure. Hold on. Oh, boy. There's a lot of scrabble. scrabble. I mean, There's a lot of what now? What is that? I don't. I, mean, I do don't we, know what it is. Anybody is. taking the time to even ask what that creature is? What is that thing? Yeah. See, we don't. We don't talk about that. Is that the beast? There's no reason to make me feel bad about myself right now. Dude. I I just like to know what on earth that is. It's it's accusatory. The tone in your voice. You're not even like you're not inquisitive. You're accusing. Well, it makes me angry looking at it. I see. The more you stay on it, the angrier you get. You need. Oh, I down. see who it is. I get it. I just looked. It's because now the thing's in focus. Before it wasn't in focus. It's Wolverine mm -hmm. as Weapon X. There it is. Congratulations, you made my day. And a lot of hypodermic needles everywhere. You're a tough guy to please. Okay, so what, you, what you're suggesting is from the ground up, naked bodies first, then clothes. Always drawn the, the body naked. Yeah. Including the penis, because Dan goes all the of way. Of course, it's then a part of the body, Dave. It's part of the story. Are you saying you like to draw naked penises as opposed to the clothed penises, Dan? Yeah. Okay. Back right when you guys were talking about that, that is the part of the body I was, shall we say, rendering. That's a lie. It's true. Hey, Dan, I saw a couple, you know, because I follow your, your your postings, but I saw a couple of your most recent postings, and they had zip, Zipatone on them. Do you actually put Zipatone on your commissions, you know, physically? Before, before Eric can disparage me about this. Um, Dan, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, well, thanks for that, Dan. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I, there's. It's not real Zipatone. It's. Uh, I don't have much of that stuff left, and I'm always like saving it for a rainy day. But the longer you save that, as you know. Yeah. The, what? Can you well, guys not hear me? The the adhesive uh, doesn't work as well. Yeah, the adhesive. Is, I mean, you can't even pour, peel it off the adhesive anymore. Right. Really. So that's it's kind of a bummer. I, I prefer to use it, in, and I see a lot of a lot of artists using Zipatone they get from this company, Deleter. But the problem with that that Zipatone is it is so fine; it's almost a gray tone as opposed to legitimately <laughs> great. <laughs> legitimately, um, look at those abs. Being a texture, uh, it, it it's so fine and so small. I'm like, you might as well just use a Copic marker or ink wash at that point because you're not getting the effect of Zipatone the way I like to see it. Right. Know? So do you apply? Is that, I mean, there was a Daredevil sketch you did recently that, that the, yeah, what happens the, is, the figure itself didn't even have a holding line. It was just Zipatone. 
So what the actual zip atonement you apply to the paper? Um, no, I mean, what I do there is um, I, I'll just put the zip atone on after in um, Photoshop. I'll do a layer, a multiply layer, with, and then add gray tone to it. And then just it's the half tone filter that comes standard sure. with Photoshop. So, but in other words, then then the commission is without Zipatone, obviously. It is, but I, I'll when the commission ships, I I put like a gray tone, like a wash. Oh, I see. Okay. So, it's uh, uh, it's Dan's go-to trick, which is flim. Hey Klaus! Flim. Hey Klaus! <laughs> look up at your screen. Pardon? Say that again. Look at the screen. <laughs> what am I looking at? That's Dan. Who is Dan. that? Stamp an ocean. Oh, it is not. Yeah, it really is. It's the same guy. Is this the same photo shoot? It's probably within the same year. What about this guy? Look at this guy right here. Yeah, Lord. Wow. Look at that head of oh, hair. Really? I like it. I think uh, he gives you a run for your money, Dan. I know. I don't. I'd like to. Hmm. I don't know how okay, I feel about that. Let's, let's not get too, uh, you know, uh, randy here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, kids. I'm going to have to need to excuse myself. So you guys have a wonderful weekend. Well, Eric, we're just I just hopped in. You just got here. I know. You are, I'm effectively giving you the baton. Go, car yeah, go forth and carry, that. Dan. Well done, Eric. Well, well done. Let's see what you did there. Uh, well played. Uh, All right. what, which cover Happy. was this, by the hey, way, before you go? You. Happy, happy, happy Saturday, everyone. You too. Bye. It's not that happy. The whole world's going to hell. Knock it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He knows none. You know what, guys? No offense to Eric. Lovely guy. This is better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, uh, I would agree. Yeah, normally, I mean, normally Eric. I would agree. Eric has a lot, like if you like great drawing, okay, fine. That's great. It's that essential sequential chemistry that's coming out now. <laughs> Just yes, imagine. It's part of the charm you would get if you were actually at the show and unfortunately in line to see Tim Sale. And then you have to listen. <laughs> and then you have to listen to me as you're waiting in line patiently to see Tim Sale. Have you ever overheard some good conversations during that time? Well, it's generally Dave and I. Uh, critiquing somebody in the industry or me me pretending to critique something about Eric just to get under his skin. That sounds about right. Yeah. I think my, my favorite con memory with you, Dan, it was that time when we uh, it wasn't in a room, it was on the floor mm -hmm. there were a bunch of seats like it was a you know, the conference room kind of thing. It was a panel and uh -huh. we just started riffing made up stuff. We just started essentially lying to the audience about everything. <laughs> our our panels, I love doing a panel with Dave. It's it's <laughs> that's a lot of fun actually. It's, yeah, we got to do more of that. That was yeah. that was just too hilarious. If you, if Dave has an audience, it's all over. Yeah, coming from a former shy guy, that's I mean I'm sometimes I'm amazed that I'm doing that kind of stuff. No, you definitely don't shy away from, uh, you know, commenting there or when people have questions. It's great, honestly, with very straightforward answers to, um, that artists have or fans have about the business and, and about drawing, which is very, I'm sure for the fans, like very refreshing. Yeah, it gets me in trouble from time to time, but I'd rather be uh, known for something than not known at all, I guess. I just think most people will shy away from giving a, a truthful answer. Sometimes I feel like if they, if you give them honest advice or honest secrets about the, about drawing or something that you, they'll somehow take your job. I've known a lot of artists over the years who, who don't want to um, impart, impart their wisdom. Really? That seems yeah. to be the opposite of, you know, from at least from you guys, every, every time we're at a convention and, aspiring artists come up you tend to spend time or at least to you know answer some of their questions and try to help them get better i try to pay it forward um you know i don't yeah, know I mean, how great my advice is I, I i'm still you know obviously a long way to go there but um all right 
All right, Jace, I'm done for the day. What do you think? Let's see what you drew. Oh, that camera went offline, uh, Klaus. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Let's see. Well, Let's see. Partially done. Oh, cool. Uh, I didn't realize that that, it was that big. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've heard that a lot, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Come on! You, you knew that was coming. Um, Jace, I'll give you a call later. I guess. Yeah, um, we can. We can finish uh, getting your setup. He's gone. Dan, it was good to see you. Dave, it's always good to see you, Klaus. It's a. Uh, it's one of the great joys to uh, be in this community. I have to say. They don't Jason. oversell it. <laughs> Jason has set up a, a nice community, which is. Did I, did I go too far? You <laughs> might have. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> I, see I, it, I, uh, I hope to see you guys next week, all right? Yeah, definitely. Oh, nice. Okay. Coolio. Uh, stay safe. Be well. All right. We'll see you later, Klaus. Okay. Goodbye, sir. And then there was us. And then there was just you, Jokers. That's how it always is with Dave and I. You're the last and ones. And Dan's not showing anything he's working on, so this is going to get real boring. Nah, hopefully we'll get some good questions. Like uh, Wayne's asking Dave, how do you know that Jen slash Sylvia Saska? Who? Jen slash Jen. Sylvia Saska. Is that right, Wayne? Saska. The Sas oh the Saska sisters, yeah I really don't know them. I mean uh, they're I can't even. Uh, I did a I did a, uh, <laughs> a cover for their book with that they did with Daniel Way, and I mainly did it because I know Daniel Way. So um, they seem cool, you know, but I've never actually met them in person. Who who are they? Uh, they're uh, twin sister directors. Actually, I don't know if they're twins or not, but they sure look like it. Um, and they direct uh, horror movies. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say like WWE wrestlers or something. No, no. Um, but once again, they seem like cool, cool people. Seem. I mean, I don't know if people like Dan those people. I mean, Dan's like a true, you know, star fucker. So. <laughs> He knows everybody. Oh, oh, I can't hang out with you. I got to hang out with, you know, Muse, the people from Muse. No, I know all the Muse people. He's always throwing that in my face. Dave's jealous. Dave's, Dave's a bit, we like to call on this business a hater. He, yeah. <laughs> oh, here comes my little son. Where's your son? What's he up to? Wait, you let him out of the box? TV, little monkey? No. Are you sure? Come on in. Do you know who's on? Dave Cookie Johnson. I know him. Too. You don't want to say hi to Dave? How about Jason? No, um, yeah, hey, I Colt. Say, I sit on this and all of you don't want to be on TV because you're super duper shy. <laughs> Colt, what's up? Here he comes. You want to yep. see who it is? See, Dave is drawing a picture of a duck. Jason has his doggy over there, right? That's Cooper. Cooper, you know a person named you know a person named Cooper, not a dog, right? One of your friends at school. Look, just scratching the bomb zoom. He likes his butt being scratched. Yeah. It's like Dave. Like Dave. Does Dave like his bomb zoom scratched? I do like my butt being scratched. Yeah. <laughs> I like your shirt, Colt. You like he likes your shirt. Thank you. That's cool. Yeah. Do you know all the names of the ghosts? No. Yeah. Ghost Do you know they have names? The names of the ghosts? No. Ghosts one, two, three, four, and I believe five? Nope. No. Oh. You don't know they, they have names? Come on. Scary ghost. Medium scary ghost. Bottom ghost. Bottom yeah. ghost. <laughs> Uh, Kostaki, how do you feel about COVID, the coronavirus? I like it. Yeah. Yeah. He likes how, it. How come? Hey, because Elena. I get to stay home with my mom and daddy. Oh, that's fun. That's a good reason. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Are you having fun? Are you having mm -hmm. fun? Yeah, it's kind of fun. We like it. What's the best part of your day? What's the best part of your day? Playing. Yeah. Playing, Playing. with daddy or mommy? Um, both. Both. Well, that's a very diplomatic and answer. I usually, and I usually watch Ben 10. Is that your favorite? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Did you know Dave, Dave worked Dave on that? Just gave him a great drawing of Ben 10. Of course he knows. Is that why you like Dave so much? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He does all sorts of drawings for Christaki. Mm -hmm. And he's your godfather of science. Isn't he? Mm -hmm. And he gives you great birthday presents. Oh, yeah. You're a lucky kid. Yeah. Is it? And ben and Jenny get you great presents too, huh? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Again, if you put the drawing uh, in a under your like in some storage locker yet, or uh... no, it's you can see it on eBay though. <laughs> it's on eBay. Nice. I, I thought it would get more bids than it has, but you know, oh well. Which one's the that? The, the bidding's not over on that yet. It's uh, if you look for a seller, Christaki, uh, Christopher Colt, Pan Ocean, you'll see all the drawings that you've done over the years. Look, we got to do what we can. Times are tough for artists. The whole pencil down business. I'm taking a look. I put it up for sale, Jason. I got to do what I. You know what? When you give somebody a gift, it's it, you have to kiss that goodbye. It's no, that was you did a good deed. You did a good thing. It's over, and you're obviously thanked for it. But then it becomes something else. In this case, coffee money for Daddy. I can't blame you. Uh, yeah. Let's you see. Know, Jack Daniels isn't cheap. <laughs> so, so I have a question. How come when I got on the air, consequently, uh, Eric got off, Adam got off, and then Klaus, who showed a few pictures of me in uh, various stages of undress, and then he got off? Hmm. I don't know. It's a... I don't want to say it's a Dan thing, but... Well, maybe I, I, they had I, to get off. Maybe they had to get off to get off. You know, probably. You, that's what I'm going to help. That's what I'm going to tell myself. Yeah. So I feel better. It was too much for them. They're like, that's so much, man. Too much. Dave, what do you? What's your favorite thing about drawing cowboy boots? Ooh, cowboy boots. Um, I don't think I've ever drawn a cowboy boot. Yeah, you've never drawn a character with a cowboy boot. Sure you have. Yeah. What was that? Uh... Oh gosh, what was it? Rawhide kid. Flag? Yeah, raw rawhide kid. Yeah, but you didn't see his boots. Yeah. No, Dave will never draw. Dave gives other artists a lot of shit for not drawing feet, but you will never, and I mean never, find a drawing of Dave's that actually shows the feet. There's always smoke or a cape or a convenient rock. Hmm. But Dave Why will not draw feet. Hard, Dan? What? Why would I draw stuff that's hard to draw? Exactly. He avoids those like the plague. He's like, oh, I'll cover that with a, with a cape. I can kind of do drapery. I mean, if I'm going to draw somebody shooting a bow and arrow, do you think I'm going to actually look at a bow and arrow? No. <laughs> it's two sticks. What's that you need? Oh. Nah. Do I have any cool stories about the dirt premiere? Um that was pretty cool i have to say the after party with uh tommy lee was pretty neat at uh whiskey a go-go and uh, at the time who was who's there's one guy he's from saturday night live um kind of a younger guy but he was dating uh some hot chick from like my generation but there's a huge age age gap um she was in all. She was in all those like vampire slayer type movies. Um, Pete yeah. Davidson. What? Pete Davidson. Yeah, Pete Davidson was there, and he was. That was the guy, and he was dating the the that woman, the underworld woman. Oh yeah, that's right. What and was her she, name? She looks very fetching. Um, who else? I mean, there were a lot of there's you know a lot of a lot of the Motley Crue guys were there. There were a lot of like rock stars there. It was fun. Ha! <laughs> Dazzler drawing. Uh, let's take a look. That came out great. 
little, I mean, I'm not Dave, but a paint. Dave's insane. Kate Beckinsale, that's her name. That's yeah, Kate Justin. Beckinsale. But, um, that's really coming out good, Dave. Yeah. I, I, more Who's that for? Black and white, you know? Is that for Christaki again? No. No, it's uh, one of Jason's guys. It's for it's Roger. Really yeah, I'm, I'm, it's kind of a bad business model to. Uh, <laughs> you're, <laughs> I'm only getting paid to paint or to, to draw in black and white, and here I am doing a full painted piece. But I never said I was a good businessman. Dave is all about the customer. I like making the fans happy. That's what you're all about. Dave is notorious for making the fans happy. One way or another. Dave, question, and don't give me some baloney answer. Have you ever dated a fan? Uh, yeah. You well, have. what do you mean by date? Well, I started out like at a show, or you met, you met a uh, young lady or whoever at a, at a show, and you're like, you're getting along quite well. And then you go, why don't we have dinner or a conversation somewhere, perhaps coffee? Yeah, that's happened. That's happened. Interesting. Has it happened to you, Dan? No. You never dated a fan? No. Not that I wouldn't. If I was single, I probably would. But um... Well, you, you know, the, the key word is fan. You know, you've got to have the <laughs> have have some fans in the first place. <laughs> I wish I could talk about what I'm drawing right now. Me too. But as you know, I don't think anybody's watching, are they? Well, we got a few people in here. Yeah. How many, how many of us watching right now? Uh, 24, 25. That's not bad, Dave. Oh, all right. How many people are normally in the drink and draw uh, room? The numbers are thousands, thousands. Um, no, like, Upwards of around 500 people sometimes, which I mean is decent, but it, you know it's it's picking up because we've had we had Walt Simonson, we had Howard Chaikin, we recently had Bill Sienkiewicz. I mean those 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 guys are you know, people are anxious to hear what they have to say. Mm -hmm. I mean that's the, the kind of neat thing about these the live streaming is is you're getting more opportunities for people. It's, it's easier and easier to get online. At least that's how I feel. If I anyone agree. cares. Yeah, the last few streams have been great. So who's scheduled? Who's coming up? We haven't uh, made a final determination. I thought we did make a final. Well, we haven't asked them yet. Let's put it oh, I thought you, you got to ask. I mean, you basically got to ask t this weekend. Yeah, no, I was, I was going to. Okay, good. Why did you want to draw Dazzler, by the way? Why? That was Jeff's um, suggestion. Um, I thought I thought Dazzler. I don't know. I was like the character. I like. I mean, I like the seventies and the sixties. So, um, I I may have even bought a Dazzler comic book. I may have. I don't know. Just as ref for reference. For, by reading Pleasure. Dazzler was a good character. In the 80s. Um, I don't know. I, I always thought the character looked cool. I thought I, I wrote a story. I wrote a Marvel uh, story I always wanted to do. With that character. I don't know if I'll ever have the opportunity to do it. But. It's like a 70s story. You like those period pieces, huh? I, I do. I think they're I, You know, sometimes some of these some of these Marvel characters and comic book characters, it makes it makes the stories a little bit more believable if they're coming from a time period that um, we're no longer experiencing. You know, like if you think about the Wild West, in reality, that timeline wasn't that that long ago but it's almost a mythical, legendary time frame 
from from our perspective as um, you know fans of fiction or how we fictionalize it and talk about it. It's almost like the Roman Empire, you know, practically. So it's interesting. If you were able to live in any time period, what would it be? Where would it be? Uh, I mean, not for nothing. I have I've thought about it because it's such a viable thing to to consider. Um, I don't know. I'd want to choose a time period where you didn't have something like the bubonic plague or something like that to worry about. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe the turn of the century would be interesting, but it it all depends on your location. If you're at the turn of the century and you're experiencing World War One, that's not going to be so great. But you know, I don't know. I think that this timeline's pretty good. Right right before this hit, it's not yeah. bad. I'll stick with now. Minus Although the, the best time of my life, I'd, pr I'd probably say it was age 22. How about you? Dave? Uh, he's uh, he's on mute. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the 60s? 70s seemed, seemed like they were crap. Actually, yeah, the, the, I would say the summer of love would have probably been the best if you're talking about that sort of thing. So yeah, then you got dirty hippies. Take a bath. <laughs> you don't have to be dirty. You don't have to be. More they fun. Prefer. Man, I gotta get some white out that or white paint that's really, really thick. You need uh, that bleed proof, bleed Dr. Uh, Martin's PH Martin's bleed proof, uh, bleed proof, bleed proof white. Yeah, because this stuff I'm using is just not cutting it. I mean, it's gouache for crying out loud. Jesus. Is it, a, is it an acrylic gouache or? Oh, yeah, it's an acrylic gouache. Maybe that's the problem. So it's a little water based then. Yeah. Ugh. That'd be nuts. It's looking good. So, Dave, if you, you can live in any time period, again? when would it be? Uh, I'd personally like to go back to the uh, early 60s, the Mad Men era, just all the suits and just everybody was real sharp before all the polyester started coming into play, you know, just that, that polyester crazy fashion with the giant, call, you know, like lapels and, ugh, you know, I like that thin suit, you know, just classic bad men look i think that'd be fun to walk around in because i'd probably have to shave my beard to fit in but you know no you'd be a beatnik yeah that's true <laughs> what do you guys think klaus is doing right now uh let's see what time is it lamenting our friendship uh, prepping some food i bet you or started work on his next page he's always working so what 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 uh book is klaus on um he's working on action comics with uh, john jr at the moment oh wow that's great so that's been keeping him busy talk about a perfect um pair you know yeah, good team. What other teams do you think are in that stratosphere? Burn, Austin. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, I, I know there's a lot of good writing pairs. You know, you got like uh, Brubaker and Phillips seem mm -hmm. to have a real synergy. Azarello and uh, Riso are, are something you always people ex are excited to look at. How about some of the uh, fine listeners? Who are there some of uh, some of their favorites? Yeah, let's get some some comments. Uh, nobody wants to talk. Nobody wants to talk to us anymore, Dan. Well, can you blame them? Not Another really. side effect of Dan coming in. I know. Every time I show up. Uh, let's see. People seem to. Shy away. Wayne's asking if you'd like to do a Cold War Nick Fury slash Black Widow story. 
Who? Uh, Dave and I have talked about that. We we actually talked about it, or or was it um, me and Bob Bob Layton? Well, I've had people ask me if I ever wanted to do a Nick Fury thing. So and how do you answer? He smacks him in the face. Sounds like sounds like how Dave would answer. Yeah. When was the last time, Dave, you threw a punch in anger at someone? When I was a kid. Oh. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Oh. Do you remember that fight? Why you got into it? Uh, it was actually my uh, like neighborhood friend, and he, uh, I don't know why, but he decided that you know, as we were walking by my house on his way to his house, I decided, you know, I was going to call it a day. He's like, nope, you're coming to my house. And That's nice. Like, yeah, he wants to hang out. I was like, nah, I think I'm good. And uh, he had a, he had a uh, uh, slingshot on him. Uh-huh. He had a rock. And he goes, nope, you're coming to my house. And I was like, no, nah, I don't think so. And I, and he aimed it at my head. Uh, I said, nope, you're coming to my house. And I decided to make a break for it. And he let the rock fly. And it hit me right in the temple. Oh, I mean, ouch. It could have killed me, I guess, you know. But it hit the right, you know, the, the soft spot on the side of your head. Um, and, uh, yeah, game on at that point. So, did you give him a beat down? Uh, we fought. I don't know. I don't think there was a winner or anything. But Did you disarm him? Yeah. I went, you know, I went and told my parents because I was bleeding. And uh, they went and told his parents, and all they did was uh, take the uh, slingshot away. Well, it's a, definitely, I mean, definitely a good idea to take the slingshot away from that kid. No, I know, but, I mean, Jesus Christ, he could have killed me. You know, the guy was a psychopath, it turned out, so... How's he doing now? I have no idea. You ever, <laughs> ever worry it? It's uh, Cully. Welfare? It was Cully Hemner. Yeah. Yeah, it was Cully. That's what, that's what I'm getting at. Have you ever, J- Jason, wanted to physically attack, say, someone like an old high school friend of yours, like maybe Ivan Brandon? Uh, yeah. Every day of high school, I was like, God damn that guy. He was a big thorn in your side, I hear. Yeah. Nah. He didn't have Ivan Brandon around. That was Ivan. I haven't seen him, in a, obviously, in a while. He's but... in L.A. Is he? Yeah. He moved? Uh, I, think he, I, I, think, I don't think he intended to be here as long, but then this thing hit, so now he's, he's hanging. Uh, forced to be here. He's not a big fan of Los Angeles, but he keeps showing up. Have you been able to get out and get out of the house a little bit? Uh, I went to Home Depot this morning. That's fun. I went yesterday. Again? I mean, you well, we, had to get, we couldn't get everything we wanted from the one on Sunset Boulevard. We had to go to the one in the, in the valley today. What were they missing? They just had a limited supply of soil, and the ones in the valley didn't for some reason. I think everybody is gardening um, now, <laughs> yeah, thanks, exactly. thanks to uh, this. Yeah. They're like, I'm going to get my own produce. Is that your plan? Pardon? Is that your plan? Be Dan the farmer? Um, it's farmer a little Dan's plan. Farmer. I'm certainly not going to stop her from. Oh, Kirby and Sinnott are great teams, certainly. Gene Cole and Tom Palmer, uh, John Buscema and Tom Palmer, John Buscema and Tony DeZugna, Marshall Rogers and Terry Austin. Obviously, Frank Miller and Klaus were a great team. I think uh, that would I think Klaus is talented enough that no matter what stage Frank was in artistically, and I know that he won. You know, obviously, he's going to go on his own journey artistically and want to ink himself and express himself in that way. But I do think Klaus really always plussed his work. And um, 
it would have always been a, a good, you know, complement to whatever, you know, whether it was would have been Sin City or 300 or uh, Ronin or, you know, whatever. I think Klaus was always adding something really nice, nice to Frank's work. They were a great team. Yeah, absolutely. No one's mentioned Jim Lee and uh, Scott Williams. Oh yeah, of course. That's a good the golden standard right there, certainly for the newer comics. Um, I'm trying to think other pencil or inker teams. I think more artists now just ink themselves and don't have inkers, True. except for maybe some of the older guys. It's just the way they're brought up now. You think, or I just think it. Yeah, I. I I don't, yeah, maybe you're right. I think there's a lot of artists that ink themselves. What do you? Why do you think that is, Dave? Well, you get more control. You know, I mean, I know that's why I started. I did. I, I'm the same way. I, I started inking myself. I mean, I always, I I'd always ink better than I could pencil. So, I certainly started inking my own work because I, I had a certain idea of how I wanted it to come out. I mean, you were a big uh, reason, you know, early on. And I was like, man, people can't ink me. You know, <laughs> me that. Well, I wasn't really, I was inking your backgrounds, Dave. I wasn't really inking you. I sure. know, I know. I just give you shit. It yeah. was fun. You, know, they, that, you all, all that beautiful work to uh, Bill Ray. Yeah, Alan Davis and Paul Neary. That's good. That's they good were one. great. Uh, oh, uh, Michael Zeck and John Beatty. Great uh, team. We can't go wrong there. Nope. They were fantastic. Definitely a team supreme. I mean, Michael Golden and John Beatty were a great uh, combination. But, you know, I think eventually Michael Golden, such a good anchor in his own right, he really didn't need that sort of yeah he didn't need it no no that's more of a just a time thing no just to get book you know pages done yeah uh who did kevin who's kevin nolan famous for inking anyone in particular i mean everyone he touched he did a great job but it, he never was like a regular on a on a book per se well, Casada. That wasn't a that was that was a limited series, anyhow. Yeah, but I mean, still, he, he, as many like, issues of uh, Dan Jurgens as he did um, Joe. Well, Jimmy and Joe were a pretty good team. Jimmy and Joe, that's another good one. Yeah, that's some of my favorite stuff in the nineties. Definitely not making any money on this drawing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but whoever's getting the drawing is pretty happy. Yeah, he's in here. Uh, Roger seems to be excited. I mean, that's really coming out nice, Dave. Was it I... supposed to be color? No. no. Oh, man. <laughs> Just <laughs> rip it up and man. give a new one. It's a beauty. Um, I don't know. I just, you know, I don't have any color commissions at the, at the moment. And, I don't know. You, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm all for growing Scrooge McDuck, but it would have taken me literally, well, you saw, I mean, well, you weren't here, but I mean, just doing the line art, I was done in 10 minutes and it seemed like, oh, shit. You know, I put a little bit more effort into it. So, and it was fun. I mean, I had to draw something while I was on it. So, it looks good. Yeah, I think I think I'm done. Plus, we need more uh, content for the next sketchbook. Yeah. For all those Don Rosa fans out there. I think more Carl Barks. Yeah, but Don Rosa is now the, the guy, I guess. Um, I will say, I'm, uh, you know, I don't think I'm saying anything that most people don't know, but 
That's not a very pleasant man. <laughs> uh, he's a grumpy. Like, he's a little like, grumpy anymore. You know, I've, I've I've seen this quite a bit. Like the the happier the characters the artist draws all the time, it's almost like you meet the guy in person. You know, when you're not a paying customer, and they just seem miserable. It's like, how can you go from being that way all the time to drawing like these super, you know, friendly cartoons? It, it, it makes no sense to me, but it's whatever. Um, yeah. But some interesting uh, moments with that guy. So, anyway. Well, I am done. I am starving. Um, All right. I'm going to go buy In N Out. You want me to drop a burger off? Dude, uh, you're going to In N Out? Yeah. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> I could use an In N Out, actually. Can you deliver I had something in New Jersey? Six the other day. Wasn't that good enough? That is true. You did, you did drop off some dowel rods. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, guys. Appreciate it. Who was your favorite guest? You, Dan, Thank are you. always my favorite. Thank you. And we'll just give a little summation of the of the afternoon's photo. Ah, photo captures <laughs> for everybody. And then one of Eric. We got Eric. <laughs> We got oh, Dave. Dave, did you send so that over? Boy, man. Dave, did you send that over? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> we got Cully's, Cully's here in spirit, so give God, Cully so a little busy. love. He's still, that's still his go-to um, expression. This is if my he favorite. If think anybody's watching, that's the expression he typically has on his face. Or that expression. I asked Eric to pose here for, for this picture. <laughs> for Sailor Moon outfit? That's... Yeah. No, it was uh, yeah, Sucker Punch. From that movie, uh, what was it? Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch, yeah. Baby Doll, was that her name? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Eric's new nickname, Eric Baby Doll Kennedy. Keep <laughs> <laughs> that going. Oh, boy. He's going to – I think, I'm, I, think I'm I made sure, him mad. I'm sure he's, Jason's getting a call. Yeah, I'm sure once we're done, I'm going to get an angry uh, interaction. <laughs> That makes me even happier. <laughs> He'll probably blame me. It is always Dan's fault, usually. Mainly. Mostly. Um, yeah, well, thanks, everyone, for coming in. Uh, we're about two hours in, so we'll let these guys get back to their day. I know Dan's got some uh, drawing to do. I do. Get back to his family. Actually, the UFC is having a big fight today, Dave. Oh, is that today? Yeah, it's today. So if you want to get on in on the Zoom call, let me know. What are you gonna? You gonna? Is it a pay per view? Obviously, it's a pay per view, and and Joe, Joe is doing the Ireland. Oh, Jesus! Everybody's a mess with this. Um, Joe is doing a uh, a Zoom thing for the UFC. Isn't that kind of illegal? Uh, no. I think it is. No, I think fighting? it's set up through the UFC. <laughs> I mean, it's not that fair, but you know, that's that's like the very definition of illegal. Well, I don't think it's 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 not broad. It's, you know, it's like watching watching it a tv on tv like a video videotaping a television it's not you're not exactly getting a premium experience that way oh true so I, I i mean i don't know i don't know what joe has i don't know what he has in store or why i don't understand the way he the way he moves in the night huh yeah well, what the hell if you want i know hey, by the way, roger ash uh you know i do take tips <laughs> he said to say thank you he's very happy Oh, Roger. Oh, that's the fella? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, throw, you know, throw me a dollar or two. <laughs> He'll be a returning customer, right, Roger? He's going to buy some more later. Yeah. yeah. But, um, all right. Well, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. We'll uh, check out uh, Drink and Draw on Thursday. We have a uh, guest. Oh, well, yeah. Have. And uh, hey, uh, back my uh, Kickstarter. Uh, oh, Yeah. Oh, it, yeah, I forgot. we got Dave's Kickstarter still going on. If, yeah, we got, um, I think it's like nine days left. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, we're, we're doing okay, but, I mean, damn, we could, compared to some of the other ones I've seen, we could do a whole lot better. Um, so, and it's a good book. What's the name well, again? Wait, that's the other thing. You can just get the digital 
and literally in nine days you'll get the comic. So it's not one of those Kickstarters where you got to wait months and months to get the book. The book is already done. It's ready to go. So even if you buy the, the, the print version, you're going to get it like super quick. So it's not going to be one of those, oh, I ordered it and nothing ever came. So I heard about some of those where, you, where um, it could take years and years. Never gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one is definitely, I mean, Jimmy's, Jimmy Palmiotti's uh, track record with Kickstarter is like 100%. So. Well, it's, he did have that one Kickstarter where it was an abysmal failure. And he got paid, I think the most he got paid for all of his Kickstarters. And he, he was like, he went to Aruba, he went here, he went there, supposedly trying to get the best printing deal and blew all the and money. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jimmy has a perfect track record. Um, I think this is his 13th campaign, and now he's celebrating by doing it with you. Yep. It's going to be the kiss of death. What's the name of it again? Pop, uh... Pop Kill. Pop Kill. Yeah, so... if you go to Kickstarter and just type in Pop Kill, I guarantee there's nothing else called Pop Kill on Kickstarter. Uh, so, Wayne, Wayne's backed it. I so... book that I have. Nice. Yeah, we got a couple of uh, variant covers by me and Amanda. I'm actually working today on uh, Amanda's nude variant cover. Ooh. Are, you, um, are you inking it or coloring it? I'm coloring it. Oh, nice. So it's funny. I had to, I had to figure out how to do a uh, hot tub water. Um, so I, I came up with a novel, novel way to make it look a little better than what I thought it was going to look like. So uh, novel Corona virus. Novel, yeah. There you go. Um, you can just come to my hot tub. And, and then you could just look at you don't even need rest hang out you know one you've never i think i don't think i've ever seen water in that one well you had to come up with a technique you could actually just sit in my hot tub i could bring you uh sausages or uh strange Champagne? meats and cheeses while you nice. i would do that for you dave we're friends well that's that's what i like about you dan yeah you're service orientated yeah so yeah besides jimmy's one campaign that was an abysmal failure and that he bank bankrupted Kickstarter <laughs> on. Um, definitely, you know, back this one because he's, I mean, a promise from Jimmy is pretty, you know, locked down. He says he promises not to outsource the printing to Aruba and check out the Aruba printing presses like he did before. Yeah. But he learned from that, that lesson. And now, I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy is set up to where he actually pays to get everything drawn and inked and colored before he even does a Kickstarter. So basically Kickstarter at that point is just paying them back. So, I mean, which is not easy to do. Most people can't, can't do it, but Jimmy can. And that's why Jimmy can also do the can can Kickstarter. You know? <laughs> Jimmy also can also, have you ever seen Jimmy dance? He can do the can can. He is uh, a great dancer. He does. The man has unbelievable swivel hips. You should see him when he's wearing like a Cuban shirt, you know. I have. And, uh, you know, he's got a cigar in his mouth, and he's on the beach in Florida, and he's kind of doing that that Carolina shag, you know, kind of dance with a beard. It's like an amazing tango, but with like without a partner. It's just like a solo act. It's it's something to see, especially when he's wearing his captain's hat. That's when it really comes together. You know, mm -hmm. he's like the I, captain. I watched, you know, I watched Jimmy Jimmy on the love boat. We had to love Bo Jimmy on the cruise a few years Actually, ago. You guys did. You were lucky yeah. to have that. That was a good time. Yeah. What's What's nice about a campaign that Jimmy does? And this, I'm, I was kidding around, obviously, before about um, him. You know, everything. But Jimmy will always, you know, for some of these higher tier products that he puts out, there's always all sorts of goodies that he kind of hand picks. So you're always getting a little extra bonus, fun stuff. And he, he has he definitely has fun with the Kickstarters. He doesn't pay. Dave won't be paid. I mean, that's a given. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, yeah. As a customer, you're gonna you're gonna get yeah. some value out of it. Yeah, he he pays me out of uh, what was it net? So you know, not gross, but net. And uh, yeah, I'm looking at Ben's comment. <laughs> Dan's last showered in mid March, and it's starting to impact his sanity. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. 
I did. I showered yesterday, in fact. But today, did, I, I I hold up uh, ten bags of mulch, <laughs> and uh, I smell like cow cow manure already. So, see, a lot of people don't know, but Dan used to suffer from scoliosis of the spine, and that's why he's standing like that. You know, Dave, that's a sexy right pose. Are you? You're. You know, this is. He's got to flex those abs. Look at those. That's not even me flexing. That's just my normal. That's how I look right now. If I were to take off my shirt right now for this live stream, that's how I look. Which pick do you like better, Dan? This one or this one? Uh, it's the other one for sure. This one? How come? Yeah. It's just the black and white. It gives it a little, a little more sensual feel. Uh, I just wish I had those abs. I mean, I, guess, I know Dan. You don't watch uh, Rick and Morty, but they addressed uh, abs in a certain. Uh, uh, they had a term for it that I can't repeat because I know it'll get Jason <laughs> upset. I, I, I wish I had abs like that for sure, but I don't. But let's just say it was uh, the letter C and scrubbers uh, on it. So I think the new season you, comes out by the way this weekend. You, no? you, you can put that together all you want. You know, um, it was a pretty funny episode. Hey, by the way, it's, uh, if you. If you like Rick and Morty, uh, Solar Opposites on Hulu is hilarious. Uh, it's the same. Uh, same dudes. Well, is that, is that like uh, Letter well, Kitty for you? It's uh, the the art the guy who created Rick and Morty. It's his show. What uh, about Letter Kitty? I know you're a big Letter Kitty fan. Yeah, Letter Kitty's hilarious. Um, you and that's, you and Jeff. That's an acquired taste. Not everybody loves that. I so. like Letter Kitty. According to uh, Dave and Jeff, it's like. It's better than Seinfeld or something. I never said that. Well, Jeff did. Jeff got a little bit hurt when I said it. it's definitely funny. People love it. But if it was better than Seinfeld, uh, the whole world would, would have heard of it by now. Well, it's Canadian, so that's half the problem. Mm, I don't know. It is pretty funny, though. I get a kick out of it. Yeah, I figured you would. I figured you'd like the main character. <laughs> yeah, I like. you know what I like about him? His neck. I, I just like how, like, when it's time to fight, he's got this, you know, he smoke, He takes one drag on a cigarette, does a shot of liquor, and then un, unbuttons his uh, shirt. Um, which, by the way, I found out why he's always got his shirt down, because the guy is covered in tattoos, which doesn't seem like that character would. So that's why you'll never see him, like, without that long sleeve shirt on. Oh. But he plays another character. He plays uh, uh, a really dickish hockey character, and you see, you see his tattoos on that. Um, I see you're you're into his body. <laughs> I, I just notice things, Dan. Yeah, I, I bet. Sounds like you do. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, Dave. Honestly, you know, you know what, you know what, our stream is missing, Dan. This kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's all I fun. need is the whole world to see this side of me, and then uh, I'm sure. Well, once again, it's it's like you know we we keep having these amazing guests on, and and you know, I I think we definitely got to space them out because I miss us talking. You know, uh, well, yeah, that's what I was talking to Patrick about. I, I don't know if you caught you just see those emails. I'm like, if I think our format is going to be. Let's get the best guest we can. If we can't get like an amazing guest right now, let's just do, you know, let's all draw Wonder Woman or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then eventually we'll get to a point where, you know, hopefully our subscriber list will be so high that if we bring on somebody that, you know, maybe is a big favorite of Jeff's or mine that somebody hasn't heard you about. The, mail man, the, the guy who delivers Jeff's mail. Yeah. The guy who delivers Jeff's, Jeff's friend that, you know, hey, my dentist loves comics. Let's have him on the show. Wee. Um <laughs> You know, he loves he, he his favorite issue of Avengers was I'm like so what Jeff, um, <laughs> but, but no I mean there's some artists that that are amazing artists that pretty much only artists know, and if we had a higher higher subscriber list then you know those people are going to get exposed but in, until we until we get there it it doesn't make like I'd rather yeah I'd rather us just banter and shoot shoot the breeze talk yeah. about Larry Kinney and. Um, you know, hey. By the way, for our conversation, Dan, I was trying. Oh, I'm trying to draw better. Better. So, who do you know? What I was thinking of Dave. You were you were asking about artists that that inspirational for as far as 
women artists, like drawing women rather, sorry, excuse me. But um, I was thinking of one, uh, an artist that would be great for you that would go fit right within your drawing style and wouldn't even be that much of a, well, that's nice too, would be uh, John Romita Sr. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, mean, I, I agree. And, yeah. and there's a wealth of like, especially the romance comics and yeah. um, some of the Spider-Man stuff with Mary Jane, the early John Romita Sr. stuff almost looks like your style already, but he's definitely, you know, d delivered on that female aesthetic. Well, the guy that uh, I'm currently, like for watercolor stuff, you, you follow him, uh, uh, Mark Han. Oh, fuck. Excuse yeah. Me. But that, that guy, uh, he's insane. He's a French uh, fashion, I wouldn't even, I mean, to, to say he's just a fashion illustrator is, is kind of limiting how good that guy is. I mean, he's, He's exceptional. He's kind of like Grua on steroids. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm currently just going to – I figure, you know, like I can try to rip him off and it won't even come close. I thought about the same thing actually this yeah. morning. I was looking at him and I'm like, you know what? I could just lay some of those really light watercolor tones down the way he does and just build a foundation that way very yeah. gently kind of – building build i mean I, I guess this that's the foundation of painting in and of itself but well well that's I mean, where this one started but it's still man he just there's something i'm you know i i, I got a long way to go well i mean that's that's all that guy does you know yeah you, you have to do about 50 of those drawings to even get to a place where you're like oh okay this is just a little bit of a i'm sure he's got a formula i mean he does it like it also he also makes it look effortless. Do you, do you know the guy's last name? So maybe if anyone's out there, they can follow him. It's uh, uh, C O U L O N. Um, Mark Tenny. I man, I butchered languages. Yeah, uh, he's very talented. Draws a lot of celebrities, a lot of beautiful women. Um, but yeah, he always nails the the, the likenesses. I mean. Yeah, Really blows me away. Who I was that? I love that. That guy had an art book. I'd pick that up. Who's who's new oh, on the art, art books uh, stuff, Jason? So he does have an Sean, art book. Sean Crystal has an art book that just got funded, right? Yep, we just got Sean's in uh, yesterday. Uh, they came in and, from China, and now Dave and I both sold out our books. So we've got a few left. Yeah, we've got. I think I have a case or two left of yours and uh, Dave's. But we can do another it's one. Time, it's time to do a new one, probably. Yep, we can get a, a new one getting, uh, get going on a new one, actually. And then uh, Cully's supposed to be putting some stuff together as his Klaus. And Tim Sale, also. We're about 90% done on his. Cool. So we're got to gear up for that stuff. Yeah. What was All that? right, guys. Well, I'm going to go find some food. Um Thanks for uh, Roger Ash for uh, asking for a weird commission. It was fun. Uh, yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. All right. All right thanks, everybody. Well, thanks uh, for enduring me. Few days. Uh, you guys. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.